Welcome back to SQL Mesh for DBT users. Let's pick up where we left off with our Jaffle Shop project. If you haven't watched that video, I will put a link in the top for you now. For those of you seeing the SQL Mesh UI for the first time, let's do a quick orientation on what you're seeing. Down the left side are our project files, including our models and any C data we have. When we select a model, it opens the file in our editor, and we can see the SQL, and in the case of a DBT project, the Jinja used to create the data model. You may notice at the bottom, we have our out-of-the-box column-level lineage graphs that you can navigate and zoom in and out. To really get an understanding of where your data comes from and the impact of any changes you might make. The SQL Mesh docs are similar to what you find in the DBT docs, with a few differences. For example, the SQL Mesh docs don't need to be generated, they are living docs and are always automatically updated for you. By default, the docs are available to you in the editor, but you can also run them standalone with the command SQL Mesh UI double dash mode docs. And SQL Mesh also comes with the free advanced column level lineage. Along the top right, a panel tells us about our state. We have the environment to which we are comparing our local changes. That's grayed out for now because we have yet to run our first SQL Mesh plan. There is also a summary of the changes and an error indicator in case SQL Mesh encounters any issues when running any models. Let's run our first plan and create our production environment. I wanted to take a moment here to clarify that while the SQL Mesh UI is a great tool, if you're working on more complex projects and not just kicking the tires on a POC, you will likely aim to reduce context switching in your everyday workflow. If you're an experienced data engineer, then consider having the plan view of SQL Mesh side by side with the code in your favorite code editor, such as VS Code. If you want to set up your workspace like this, follow our docs guide in the link in the description. Back to the UI and creating our production environment. We get a tip at the top that explains exactly what we are doing and recommends best practices for setting up a dev environment for further changes we want to make. Here, we get a change summary. What we have locally differs from what would be in production. Since, of course, we are just getting set up, SQL Mesh has picked up our eight new models, and it will automatically backfill the data for us. So I will hit the Apply Changes and Backfill button to create the prod environment. Now, our state information at the top, our prod is no longer grayed out. And from here, we can also create a dev environment. So I'll do just that. This time, notice that our summary of changes is different. SQL Mesh intelligently understands that the work to create and populate the tables with data has already been done. This time, we can create an instant and perfect representation of the production environment without actually redoing any of the work. So I will apply the virtual update and snapshots of our data in their current state are created for our development environment. So we have set up our environments, looked at our lineage and understood the impact that changes might have on models. The next step you might want to take is to start modifying these models. I will return to our editor and open one of the staging models. Let's go through a common workflow of adding a column to a model that has several downstream models, STG payments. I will add a simple discounted column where if the payment method is coupon, then discounted is true. Otherwise, it's false. I save my changes with Command S for Mac or Control S for PC, and in the lineage portion, I can see my new discounted column has appeared. I can even click on my newly created column and see how it is built and how it relates to my raw payments table. Something else you might want to check before committing any changes you make locally is seeing a sample of the data to see that it's working as expected. With SQL Mesh, this is easy. We can use the evaluate to pull a sample of the data based on a date range to view. From here, we can see our column has the values we expected. Okay, so we've made our change and checked it out. Now let's say we are ready to test it in our development environment. This is where we get to see SQL Mesh's automatic data contracts in action to see the impact of our changes. The effect of this change is that it's non-breaking. If you're unfamiliar with this terminology, non-breaking changes are changes that don't affect downstream models, like adding a new column. Thus, downstream models do not need to be rebuilt. So here, SQL Mesh is informing us that this change is localized to this model. The other type of change you may see here is breaking. 
breaking changes affect downstream models, like changing a column or changing the filter, and therefore they require the downstream models to be rebuilt. In this example, the two downstream models use select star, so they are also impacted, but in a non-breaking way because it's adding a new column. SQL Mesh understands schema evolution through select stars, which empowers it to properly categorize the impact of the change on the model. It is a recommended data practice to select just the columns you want to use in each model because it makes your model more predictable and more insulated from external change. So let's apply and backfill these changes for our dev environment. Next, let's make another change. This time, we will do an example of changing a column we already had. Let's pick our final model, orders. I will look at the column I want to modify in our lineage, which will be the amount column. I can trace that lineage back to understand where that column came from to know where to edit this file. I'll do a simple change to the units. Instead of dollars, I want the amount displayed for this model in cents, so I will multiply this column by 100. Now, if I switch back to my plan, you can see that SQL Mesh has identified this as a breaking change since we're changing values in an existing column. Let's apply our changes once again and return to our editing screen. This time, we have tested our changes in our development environment, and let's say we're happy with them and are ready for the last step, updating production. This is super simple in SQL Mesh. At the top right, we switch to our production environment with the drop-down menu here. SQL Mesh has summarized our multiple changes, and when we open our plan summary, we see our breaking and non-breaking changes together. Here again, SQL Mesh has correctly identified that no more computations need to be run. All these models exist in our virtual data environments, correct and without data gaps, so we can safely apply a virtual update to our production environment. This time, when we apply the virtual environment, SQL Mesh prompts you to be aware that you are about to change the production environment, just in case you didn't realize you were pushing to production. Another great safety feature to keep regressions out of your production environment. We were aiming to change prod, so I hit the button, and SQL Mesh instantly updates our data and changes the models. This time, we set up our production and development environments, explored our data to understand its lineage, made a breaking and non-breaking change that we tested in our development environment, and promoted those changes to production when we were happy with them. <laughs>